finally the action is starting. Um, what we are now going to do is to trace over um, these walls, to trace over that ground plan that we already have by using a kind of like semi 3D, I usually call it a 2.5 3D D, um, method. So that means I am using the predefined settings, the, the tools like the wall tool, which is a 3D tool within ARCHICAD, but I'm not going to bother too much about all the things um, I would do in a, in a proper modeling. Um, so what I want to achieve is now just having a proper ground plan that I can work with. One of the really good things about ARCHICAD is that you can actually, rather than always navigating up here to the top left corner and choosing the wall tool and starting to draw, um, once you already have a couple of things on your canvas, you can actually just use the ALT key. You can see one of these pipettes showing up and you can like suck up the information. So if I'm clicking here on that wall that's already existing, click on it while holding ALT, it automatically chooses that um, tool with all the settings and everything that's available. The same goes for, um, you know, over here that north point has a, a circle. I can just suck it up and automatically I can start drawing circles with the same pen color, same line width, everything. The same for text, everything. So yeah, obviously you're not going to use that. But that's a really, really good method and it makes navigation within your canvas much, much easier. But now we'll just go conventionally because we're actually starting out. So I'm pressing onto that wall tool um, and I'd be actually ready to start drawing straight away. But I want to do, I want to adjust a few things. So I click on that top navigation bar. I can click onto the wall icon as well again and that window will pop up the wall default settings. We've talked about this earlier, the height of your wall. Um, I would, if it's a, a room height or floor height wall, I would highly recommend to setting up as being linked to the story or the floor above you. Um, so you can choose that one and it will choose that kind of measurement that you have set up in your floor settings, what we've seen in the previous video. Um, really, really helpful because your floor heights might change throughout the project, so you don't have to manually change all these settings, but they will adjust accordingly. Then over here on the right, um, there's a few different drawing methods that are available to us. It's either just a single material wall, a compound wall that already has and you can see these kind of predefined things within ARCHICAD that has a build-up. You can see that there's different um, construction layers um, already set up here. Uh, and then there's a bit of more uh, a custom, a bit more of a complex geometry as well. I hardly ever use that, to be honest. Um, but of course, if you want to do a lot of 3D um, realistic build-up in a plan, that will come really handy. In the beginning, of a design, I would recommend just starting out with a single wall. Um, it kind of helps you to focus on the level of detail at the same time. So starting out with the most simple drawing method, and then you can start adding information to that as you go along with your your, um, your project and you get to know a bit more about it as well. So and again, I'm just choosing a random uh, material. We can always change these sort of things later on and we will have a closer look at how these sort of visualization um, methods are adjusted as well. So choosing brick, then of course the width, we'll probably have to quickly go just clicking escape, um, leaving that menu and we quickly have to measure the width of those walls. So that's roughly let's say 35 centimeters, again that's close enough. So going into the wall menu again, in here, and again I am drawing in centimeters, so I'm going to write 35 centimeters. Of course if you're drawing in millimeters, you'd have to add a zero there as well. Then down here, the reference line, um, there's a little, those are a little tricky sometimes. I would adjust, 
oh, I would uh, suggest keeping it at outside face for now and we'll not bother about all these other settings down here. There's heaps and heaps of other stuff. We will have a closer look at those in a moment. So okay, we'll just leave it at that. Now with that reference point that we have just seen, if you start to draw a wall, as you can see there's a thicker line on the bottom and then the dimension, the width of your wall is extending upwards. And yes, that will change regardless of what side you go. You can see I'm pressing shift here again. So regardless of where my mouse is moving to, that wall will run along a straight line that's um, horizontal, completely horizontal. Perfect. You can just click again and that wall will be um, built, so to say. Now with that reference line, if I were to change for some reason, because you know, all of a sudden I know the construction a bit better, and I realize that wall is supposed to be 60 centimeters rather than 35 for some odd reason. Um, and I'll quickly put it in the actual place. There we go, we have an exterior wall. Let's assume that is now 60 centimeters. So we're going to change that value here. There's actually a shortcut um, for that window to pop up as well. So have a look in the shortcut um, list what that is for you specifically. You can press enter and you can see those additional, um, what was it, 25 centimeters will now build inwards away from that reference line that we have seen here. And I think especially for exterior walls, I would um, recommend having that reference line on the outside of the building. Because very often you have some sort of, um, let's assume you have a building code that tells you that you are allowed to to build up until that line because that line might be, um, I don't know, a four meter distance line from your neighbor. That's your building, that the kind of line that your building code dictates. And let's assume that's really, really close to the exterior wall. If you don't have that assigned, that reference line, if that is not assigned on the outside, but rather on the inside, and all of a sudden you have to change the construction, it's getting thicker, all of a sudden, without you knowing, if you make some changes, it might actually go across that line, and further down the line it might cause some, some legal problems with your council. So that's a really, really good way to control that and keep that in mind. Again, we want to go back to those 35 millimeters, and as you can see, that top bar here, if you scroll over to the right hand side, you have access to all that information as well. So, going back again, 35 um, centimeters, that's what we want. And yeah, I'll quickly trace over all these walls again because I don't want to um, navigate over to that wall tool. I'll just suck it up with that pipette and I can start following um, that line here. Now of course as you can see that kind of having that line on the outside here now places the wall on the wrong side. I can change um, that reference line and saying now it's on the inside face so all of a sudden the wall is built up to the other side. In general I would recommend if at all possible, to leave it always as a setup on the outside face on all different walls that you have on your exterior wall. Because once you go into the 3D, in the actual 3D build up and you assign materials for rendering, those materials will be, as, um, you can choose the materials on the inside and on the outside. And as you know, a facade on the inside, there might be some plaster on the outside, there might be some um, timber or anything. And it makes it much easier if you can assign it to all of them at once. In that very case, that would mean the outside is suddenly facing inwards. That would mean if you assign timber to the outside, you'd have to switch it around for that specific wall and you'd have to manually correct these sort of things. So if at all you can avoid that, um, by building up your ground plan and your model properly in the beginning, that's, uh, that saves you a lot of work down the line as well. Now since that wall now is sitting on the wrong side, we can actually right click, go to move and click mirror or here the shortcut is command M 
and we can mirror that wall along that line. Now it's changing, it's sort of changing the direction, but the reference line is still outside, which is really, really helpful. I'm not gonna um, finish um, everything now, but I'm just showing you some of the most important or some of the helpful tools. Um, of course, if you were to have a wall, two walls that are intersecting, you don't necessarily have to, again, if you, you can press on that, um, on the corner, there's a, one of these selection in that tool, which is called stretch, you can click on there. Of course, you can stretch it out manually. Again, I'm pressing shift, so it's saying horizontal, and I can look for that point again. You can see that little pencil is turning black, as opposed to if I'm not quite on that point, it stays white. I can do that manually, of course. Or, once again, there's a tool, um, there's a, a predefined action. If you select both of these walls, you go to edit, um, I think it's in, yes, it's under reshape, and it is called intersect. Here I have its Alt plus I. You can click on them and they will automatically um, intersect. Another good thing, and I'm just quickly drawing uh, an interior wall, measuring here again. Oops, there we go. That one will be 22 centimeters. Sounds about right. Perfect. Setting it 22. There we go. Now, another thing. Um, Another useful command is, um, I usually use these shortcuts, so I have to find them here. Um, that one is again in reshape and it's called adjust. If you click on adjust, you can either draw an imaginary line somewhere, bang, it will automatically extend to that line, or you can actually click on an existing line. So going command set, go to edit, um, reshape, adjust. By the way, I think that shortcut's not really working for me on my Mac. I think there's another setting set up. So I usually use a, have a different shortcut uh, assigned to that. Again, you can, you can change all of these. Um, just go to the, to the shortcut video. It's all explaining how to do that. Clicking adjust and going um, to that outside wall. And it will automatically link together. You can also see another effect that's happening with these reference lines. If you're going, um, if you are merging them, um, of course, Night Swing it automatically, but sometimes it happens that it that they're actually not merging, that there's a little um, gap or a line that stays in between them, um, and that's because they're probably snapping to that inside um, surface of the wall rather than going all the way to the outside. So you want to keep an eye on these sort of things. Another helpful action is we have seen the command, pardon, the alt with the pipette. Um, and another one is clicking command and those tiny scissors will pop up and you can just click and it will cut up any element to the point where it's being intersected with something else. So there's there's an intersection happening here, so if I'm going to cut that up, it will cut up until there. Or I can even cut up in between two things. So that's really, really helpful um, navigating with these sort of things. So now if I want to do another interior wall, um, choosing the wall tool, drawing that wall, and now I realize, oh, I took the wrong wall width. Of course, that's an interior wall. I can use alt with the pipette, you see the selections that are present in that wall and then um, just need to, what is it, it's alt and command and now that kind of syringe type of thingy pops up and I click on that wall and now all the attributes that are assigned to that wall are now assigned to that one as well. So that's how you can start drawing that ground plan um, on the um, with the interior walls, I'm not being as picky with um, the inside and outside reference lines. Um, usually, that's not. Um, you will see how that goes for you, but I'm I'm usually not as picky. And once again, you can see here 
those two are not intersecting properly so you will have to extend it all the way to that reference line to look it nice and smooth so yes um, give it a go play around with these tools and we shall see you in the next next video with a finished ground plan